All right, so here's a topic and a few stories about, it's actually a topic that many of you are curious about. It's a topic many of you know about, and it's also a topic that many of you can't wrap your heads around. And there's also, it is a topic for numerous people who just want the topic to go away and not be spoken about. So, so whatever category you sit in, <laughs> that's, uh, that's your business, not mine, and I'll guarantee you I am 100% not concerned about what anybody's stance is on this topic. I don't care. Um, I am not a guy that needs to prove anything to anybody on this planet today. I really don't care. And, and I'm also a guy that's not scared of anybody on this planet either. You know, the majority of human beings are terrified of ridicule from other human beings. And that's kind of a sad thing, but it's, it's just a quality that most human beings have. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a real sad one. I don't have it, obviously. Um, so, there is two major reasons why I'm going to share these stories with everybody. And the number one reason is out of respect for my grandfather, who was a superb human being, a true gentleman, a true outdoorsman, more knowledgeable than I'll ever be in this lifetime. You know, he's a geologist. Um, he, he flew a bomber in World War II. Uh, numerous medals pinned on him from Queen Elizabeth and everybody else back then. Um, he retired head of safety in the naval base on Vancouver Brown, Victoria. Um, respected man. And out of respect for him, I am going to share all the stories that I have. And the reason being for that is because my grandfather went through basically his entire life being too worried about ridicule from other human beings to openly share a story that he has, an experience he had in his lifetime. And it's an experience that he had that he didn't ask for. Okay, It's an experience he had, he did not ask for, and definitely was not eager to share. And he actually didn't share his story with me until I was 26 years old. In uh I find it a little upsetting now, knowing the, the caliber of the man he was. You imagine, I mean, that man took me fishing all over the frickin' place since I was that big, took me camping, and held that secret in him all those years, and he did not tell me until I was 26 years old. Crazy. So that's, that's the main reason that I'm sharing my stories with all of you, is out of respect for that true, unbelievable man. And another man as well, Dr. John Bendernagel, who was a wildlife biologist. He's passed away now, and he lived in Vancouver Brown. I met up with him a handful of times, and he as well, I mean, he put his entire career out there on the line, and he was more concerned about the well-being of the literally thousands of people he has met whose characters were tarnished, questioned, and ridiculed because of what they saw. And uh, he actually wrote, he was the first person to write a book on this topic about these beings and he wrote the book in the style that these were known it was a known subspecies of human or whatever they are he wrote a book about them and he told me flat out the only reason he wrote this book was to help the literally thousands of people who had been discredited of the character and he had met hundreds and hundreds of them and that is really it is a really sad thing um, for a handful of years I actually went out of my way to learn as much as I could about these beings, and I intentionally seek them out. In, uh, and I had a few encounters that I definitely don't want everyone to have again, and I'm good with it. I'm done. Um, I accept the fact that these beings exist. There's no way of getting out of it. Um, I, I've seen one. I had one sitting up on a rock waiting for me on the trail. I was hiking out on watching me from about 15 yards away. And uh, that moment in time, every, everything changed. You know, that changed everything. <laughs> and uh, that was an experience I didn't ask for. That's an experience I do not want to live through again. And it also, that was an experience that created the beginning of a lifelong sentence. Because if you know me, if you followed some of my hunting videos and my outdoor career, I'm in the woods all the time. And, uh, and when you know these beings, whatever they are, when you know they exist for real, 
it's a life sentence because you will never, ever, ever go in the woods ever again without thinking about them. It's not possible. Even just a simple drive, you know, just a simple road trip across British Columbia or wherever in the middle of nowhere, up highways, up Alaska Highway, which I've done over 20, 30 times. You cannot ever not think about them. You know, your senses are on fire times 10 every single time you go in the woods from that day on. You can't get out of it. Um, you know, my style of hunting, I prefer to hunt solo for deer when I'm at home down south there. I prefer to get in the middle of nowhere where no one goes. I prefer to hike up an hour, two hours in the dark in heavy timber up mountains to go hunting for deer. And I'm telling you right now, I'd be lying if I said I didn't think about those things every single time I leave the truck. And every single time I'm hiking alone through the forest, there's a little seed in the back of my head that's saying, you know, not, not, not now, not today, not again, please not today. I want to go hunting, I want to be left alone, I want to get my huge buck, and I don't want anything to do with those things. I don't want anything to do with that experience again, I don't need to relive it. I definitely don't need to prove it to anybody, and uh, it's just the way it is. It's, as soon as you become aware of the knowledge about these things, as, as soon as you have gained your own knowledge about these things firsthand, uh, that's all she wrote. <laughs> um, and it's kind of funny because once you do, when you see one of these damn things, every single person in the world who's laughed about this topic or made fun of or ridiculed it, every single one of those people become real stupid real fast. And that's about a simple way I can describe it. I mean, it would be, how do I even describe this the way I'm, how do I even describe this what I'm trying to get across to everybody? It'd be like, the way it is right now with me, it'd be like, if I saw a huge moose in the forest, and I ran into somebody in downtown Vancouver and said, hey, there's a moose in the forest, and they laughed in my face and said, you're an idiot, moose don't exist. You believe in moose? You realize how much of an idiot that person would be, right? I mean, you'd be like, what? Well, I've seen one. Yeah, no, you think you saw, and you didn't see anything. What an idiot, this guy thinks he saw a moose. Well, now you can replace the moose with these beings that are known as Sasquatch. And uh, they're real, they're upright, they're alive. Um, they're here, they've been here longer, apparently, than we have. Um, they have been seen literally thousands and thousands of times. They have over a hundred and some odd DNA samples from them from around the world. DNA, all right? Um, a lot of people instantly say, well, if there were Sasquatches, you'd see one on, on a trail camera by now. Okay, for all you people that react that way, uh, number one, all of the information you might be curious about is available to you now. You have to sit down and you have to put up the effort to go Google it up and seek out the knowledge known on this topic if you're really interested in it, okay? Because um, there's other people like myself who absolutely, basically don't give a shit if you believe in them or not, don't give a shit if you are curious of them or not. I don't care, I really don't care. <laughs> I do not care. I'm not going out of my way to show somebody a picture. I'm not going out of my way to argue with anybody because I don't care. Um, but again, why am I making this video? Why am I telling these stories? Um, the, the main two reasons are out of respect for my grandfather and out of respect for Dr. John Benenegle who passed away. Um, those are my two main reasons for sharing all the knowledge I have in these topics is out of respect for them. And uh, I think I'm just going to leave the comments. I'll leave the comment section on, the, on these videos shut off because the people who I'm going to be talking to through these videos are the people who have had similar experiences or are people who are uncertain and may have had an experience and they're curious about the topic and that's who I'm talking to right now. Everybody else, carry on. I don't give a crap if you watch this video. I really don't care if you need to be convinced these things exist. I don't care. Carry on. Go find somebody else to uh, entertain your ass because it's not going to be me.